Hey there, this is Adam Hiley with Maniacal Labs, and I just wanted to do a quick little video about a trick that I've found to be able to 3D print holes in the air without any real support. Now, is anyone that's seen my design for the Engravenator, uh, you can see that obviously the, there's a lot of complicated parts on here. And I got a lot of questions uh, when this was first released about, you know, what the print settings needed to be and whether or not it needed any supports. So like for example, you can zoom in here, you can see this part on the side. And this the face on this uh, y-axis, you know, bearing block here. Now the, the, this face was actually printed down on the build plate. And all these five screws here are have holes for the heads that are recessed. And then there's holes that are smaller diameter, three millimeters, or I think it's 3.2, they go all the way through, which means there's basically a hole printed in the air. Now, normally the way that you would do this is you would use support. And there's a couple other tricks you could possibly use, but I can tell you right now, none of this is printed with supports. Not a single thing on the entire engravenator, or to be honest, anything that I print ever has supports. Uh, I hate supports. Supports are terrible. I don't like doing post-processing in any way, shape, or form. Best case, I maybe remount a hole if I, it needs to be a little bit bigger. But I absolutely hate supports with just a fiery passion. So I'm going to try to show you how you can do that. Now let's kind of give you a general idea of the basis of things. So we're going to go into Fusion 360 here and do the most basic possible thing we can to get the general idea. So I'm just going to make a nice big square. And also I want to point out here that if, if you're not doing this, you always should. I do this with every design. Basically, you can see here, I've got one for the size of an M3 hole, and it's it's 3.2 millimeter, and yes, that's fine. That's basically just to adjust for tolerances in the printing, uh, because a three millimeter hole would be a zero tolerance fit. I want the screw to be able to go all the way through. M3 head, six millimeter, most are actually about 5.5, so that fits. And then this one's gonna be important here, layer height, 0 0.2 millimeters. That's just kind of standard what I what I use, and as you'll see, this trick will work whether or not your your layer height height is exactly zero point two, but it's it's a good one to choose to start. So I've got a square. I want to have an M three hole here, so we'll say M three head. So that's the that's the size of that, and then we'll come in here and do M three hole. Now I've made my <laughs> my base design a little bit ridiculously large for this. So we'll just bring that down a little bit. Now, what I'm gonna do is come into this and I'm going to extrude this up just 10 millimeters, nothing crazy. And then we'll bring this up for a head recess of four millimeters. So most M3 screws should be able to fit in there, no problem. I'll take the sketch off so you can see that. So as you can see, just now, obviously, normally the way you print this is you print it with this face down if, if you were just printing this completely useless, stupid little block. But let's just say for the sake of argument that with the rest of my design, this thing needs to be printed such that this face uh, at the bottom here is going to be down on the build plate. So just to show you what's going to happen with that, we will export this and bring it into the slicer. Okay, now as you can see, this is on here and I've properly oriented it in Fusion 360 so it, it loads in with the face I wanted down to be down. And you can see we've got that sort of issue where there's the hole floating in, in the, the top there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slice this as is with a 0.2 millimeter quality uh, slicing option here. And if I come down through here, you'll see pretty quickly what the problem is. So we're going to get down to the level of where that hole is. And there's the you know the the few layers for each, and then as you can see here, here's the the layer in question. If we zoom in on this, you'll see that it's printed all this, and then it's printed this ring in the middle. And if you look, that ring is just floating in midair. Um, any of this blue that it's going to try to print is going to be just sort of bridging out into the middle of nowhere, it's going to try to print that. Now, in my experience, a hole this size, that's actually going to, oddly enough, work to an extent. The inside of the hole is not going to be super clean, but it'll generally work. But I don't really like it. Uh, now, if we go back to Fusion, one of the things that you're going to see that people will try is they'll do something like this. So they're going to come in here, we'll do a new sketch. 
turn off the first sketch. And I'm going to project this just so I have this hole. And then what they do is extrude. We're going to do negative in this case because the direction is going. Negative layer height. So now we've got a sacrificial layer. So it's it's in here. As you can see, it's going to completely fill that. And if I and if I now export this back into the slicer. So now you see we've got this here in the slicer with the sacrificial layer in there. And if we slice this, you see on that layer, it's going to just bridge across there. But now the problem is it's sacrificial. And like I said, I don't like doing post-processing of any way, shape, or kind if I can avoid it. That's just more work for me to do when I'm done. So we're going we're gonna to get rid of that. That's, that's terrible. All right, so now here's the point of this entire thing. And this is going to seem like it's a bit of a pain in the butt. But trust me, once you get used to it, it's worth it. So we're going to go back to the original sketch. And the reason I do this is to, because in the general grand scheme of workflow, this makes a little bit more sense to me. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a new rectangle. I'm going to choose center rectangle. And this is one of the reasons why I like having these user parameters. Because I can put this in here, and I'm going to make that square the exact dimensions of the main central hole, the one that would be floating. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to create another center rectangle. And I'm going to do one side of it be the same width, and the other side just needs to go beyond the edges of the, the large hole. So seven works in this case, and that's fine. So we're going to leave this here. So now if we go back, you can see it's already it's still been extruded, and we're going to turn that back on. And the trick here is that you can see the first extrusion that we have for this hole is four millimeters. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to do two more extrusions. And the first one, we're going to select these two sides. We're going to extrude that, and we're going to do four was the depth that we had. And I'm going to say plus layer height. I'm going to select that whole thing there. And I'm going to copy it because we're going to use that again in a second. So as now as you can see, I've got this little bit of a recess down in there. But next, I'm going to select the square in the center. We're going to extrude that. And we don't want to do the same thing. We actually want to do layer height times 2. There we go. So now we can turn off the sketch and you can get a better idea for what this looks like. So as you can see, we've got from this face to this face is that same four millimeters. But from this face to this one, I'll measure that so you can you can prove it, is 4.2 millimeters. But from the top the bottom face to that square face is 4.4 millimeters. And that layer height is important because it's going to be dependent upon what layer height you're printing this at. And what this is going to do is this is going to trick the slicer into doing something a little bit interesting. And we'll export this so you can see what I'm talking about. So now we've got my modified one. And you can see if I get this sort of, sort of right angle so you can see with the, with the shadows, we've got that little extra extrusions in there. And if I slice this, so I'm actually going to go back up one here, so you can walk through this. And you can see, as I come down, you've got these extra little features in here. We'll actually go back down the hole. So here's, here's the, the hole at the very top of it. The next thing it's going to do, it's going to fully bridge across. And as you can see, it's bridged from the absolute edge of the hole all the way to the edges, and then straight across. So that's not going to be a problem to print. Then if we go up to the next layer, now it can bridge in the other direction. And that's why we do those two different inset extrusions. And that way, none of this is ever printed without proper bridging, and none of it's ever just floating in the air. You get these nice little bridges. And then it goes into a full circle, and then you've got the rest of the hole. And now, that's going to print with no problem. Now, this is going to look a little bit maybe weird when you get the final thing, if you look down the hole, because there's going to be a little bit of a droop. But it, in 
in practice, it's pretty much spot on with the dimensions, and that's just going to work. Okay, so this will also work with other things other than just circular holes, and we can come back and do a different one here. So we're going to turn these off. And let's do another sketch. Do it back on the top again. And I'm going to do basically the same square. We'll do 25 by 25. And let's say in this case, and I'm going to just do two examples here so we can get this done. Let's say I'm going to put a hole here. And now, it, obviously this is somewhat dependent upon the capability of your machine to do bridging. So I'm just doing these with small holes. I typically am doing this with M3, M4, and M5, and that works pretty well. Uh, you can do bigger stuff. It just depends upon you know how much your machine can bridge. So in this case, I'm going to do a couple of different shapes that would be common. This one's going to be a little bit less common, but we'll do it anyways. So let's say we've got this square, and then the other one is going to be a polygon. And we're going to do this. Uh, let's see. So we're going to bring this in. So this would be like for if I had a hex nut. Uh, for the M3 hole. So again, we're going to go back in and do, to start, the same basic idea that we would have as we would with the circular one. It's just a slightly different size. Here, add that. Again, we'll make that just bigger. And then if we do this one. So now, as you can see, it's not a circular thing, but it, it's generally going to going to work. And actually, in this case, I'm going to just remove this circle entirely, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to come back in here. We're going to select all of this except for these center bits. Screw this up 10 millimeters. And then I'm going to come back down to this. And in this case, we're going to do four. And then on this one, it'll be four plus layer height. So you can see this one, we don't actually have a circular hole here, but We've got a square hole, and that will print fine. On this one, we're going to choose the full array for all three extrusions, so four, and then four plus layer height. And now, four plus layer height times two. You can see we've got that. So again, let's export this. We'll slice this up. And yet again, you'll see that we get this nice bridging and then closing into whatever continuation of the hole that we have. And that's going to print perfectly fine without any supports. And I'll also show you that, at least in Prusa Slicer, this will work with other sizes. So obviously smaller is okay. And I'm even going to do one that's not going to be a multiple. So we're going to do a 0.15 and slice this. And as you come down into here, that should, yep, there we go. It works just fine. You kind of get an extra, you can see there's like an extra layer on it. And that's okay as long as it's there. And I usually always check these before I print them. You can also go up to, like in this case, 0.25. And this should still work. Ideally, you do want to set these extrusion distances to be an actual multiple of your layer heights, but in this case, it's fine. Now, the other thing, and the last one, I said this was going to be short, but it's not. Um, the last one we're going to do here is 
another very common one that I run into, which is this. So we're going to do another rectangle. Let me make this one relatively small. And then I'm going to do an M3 hole. So this will be for a M3 nut, which I believe is 3.4 point to point for an M3 nut. So I'm going to end up doing sort of a side inset M3 nut with a hole in the middle. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But what I have to do is bring this out to the edge and delete these lines just for the sake of cleanliness. And then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, for the sake of my own sanity, I'm going to actually extrude this in two directions. So we're going to do symmetric extrude, and we're going to say five millimeters in each direction. Now turn this body off so I can access this, and turn that back on, extrude again, and go symmetric, and an M3 bolt is 2.4 millimeters, we'll round up to 2.5. Uh, thick five by two. So now we've got this hole. And again, just pretend like normally I would want, if I had to print just this, I would print it on this face. And this would print perfectly fine without support. But just pretend that this is part of a larger assembly and it has to print on this bottom face. So you've got, if I turn the sketch off, you've got a hole all the way through, an M3 nut's going to go in here, and then you've just got this hole hanging out in the middle. And you've got the same problem. And the solution is basically the same. Now, one thing I will suggest for your own sanity to figure out how to get in here while you're doing stuff is to use section analysis just to sort of cut this and then you can have more full access to it. But we're going to actually go back to the original sketch just because that's easier. And again, the solution is going to be the same. We're going to say M3 hole on that. Do another rect. Eight, for fun. Okay, so on this, the problem is the same. We're going to extrude up. In this case, it was what we said it was 2.5 divided by 2, so we're going to do 1.25, and then we're going to say plus layer height. So you can see we've got those insets there, and then again, we're going to select the square. layer height times two in this case, and you've got that same thing. And I won't bother slicing it at this point because you get the idea. This is going to print up, and if I turn off the section analysis, this is going to print up through the bottom. It's going to get to here. All of this is going to bridge fine, and then it's going to print this internal section just fine. So that's it. I pretty much just did this because I actually looked around that I couldn't find a single other article video or anything describing any technique like this, and I thought that people might actually find it useful if you, like me, hate supports. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye.